ask you a question. You don't have to give no answer. You don't even have to pretend that uh, you can even pretend that you ain't listening to him. Like Jesus did. Yes. Didn't Jesus give us a wonderful example yes. here? I was talking some about the court and going to court this morning in Sunday school. Often uh, when you're asked a question, even in the courtroom, you can stop and pause to give your answer and finally end up asking the reporter, could you repeat that last part again? You can just stall around, take all the time you want. Because again, if you're in court, usually you're there because it's you, it's you who, 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 who in the sling, and it's you, it, the trial is for you. <laughs> so take your time. <laughs> Think it through. And if you can answer a question with a question, do that, because that's always best. Jesus gave you that example also. Amen. So Jesus acts like he don't even hear him. He stoops down and begins to write with his finger, he wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Now notice how your King James is on it. See, put that all in italics. Yep. Not for emphasis, but meaning that now there's no Greek word that says this, but we're going to make this, we're trying to communicate this thought to you in English. So we're trying to make good English sense out of this. Jesus is, Jesus is just acting like he didn't hear them. <laughs> right. He heard them. He's God. He heard, he heard what they were going to ask before they asked it. Right. <laughs> he heard him. Uh, he heard them uh, asking this uh, when it was in their minds that they were going to ask it. Amen. He heard them whispering it back in the back room, you know. So uh, so it's quite interesting, and it's important that we know what these scriptures have to say here. This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooping or stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground. Now here let me just suggest to you a couple verses. If Jesus were to write something on the ground with even his finger, man, that's the finger of God, is it not? Yes. Does that make you not realize and think back? There was a time when uh, Moses, God asked Moses to go stand for him and the children of Israel before Pharaoh. Remember that? In Exodus mm -hmm. chapter 8. Mm -hmm. And uh, Moses was hoping God would help him prove to Pharaoh and his cabinet that God really had sent him. And so one of the things God said to do, well, just throw your stick down there, Moses, and it'll turn into a snake. Mm -hmm. Well, don't you know old Janice and Jan Green were standing there? They were Pharaoh's lawyers, and they threw their sticks down too, and they turned into snakes. Right. But it's very significant that Moses' snake ate their snake. <laughs> Amen. And at the beginning, I mean, uh, I mean, Moses could take some water and turn it to blood, but pretty soon, and they could even take a little water and turn it to blood, but pretty soon it got to where Moses could do some stuff that nobody else could do. Right. And they had to finally admit, uh, Pharaoh, we hate to tell you this, but we're finally getting in here. Well, this is the finger of God. That's right. Yes. There's no other accounting for this. Uh, this ain't got my finger in it or Janice's finger in it. This is God's finger in this thing somewhere because this is beyond us now. We can't do any magic tricks out do this fella. Look at Exodus chapter 8 and verse 19. See, then the magician said unto Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. Right. What's the finger of God? To get life out of dust. That's right. Amen. But all of a sudden dust could turn into Lice. Amen? Mm -hmm. This is the finger of God. Yeah. And we better straighten up and do right because, man, God must be mad at us. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He's mad at you. A bunch of bozos. Life out of dust. See, only God can make life out of dust. And that's what he did when he made man. Mm -hmm. that's right. Amen? Right. He did when he made man. He breathed into that dust and man became a living soul. Amen. Let's look at Luke chapter 11 or verse 14. Mm -hmm. He was casting out a devil and it was dumb and it came to pass when the devil was gone out, dumb spake, and the people wondered. But some of them said, he casteth out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of devils. And others tempting him sought of him a sign from heaven. Are always looking for a sign, ain't they? Yeah. Wanting to see some kind of sign. 
But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falleth. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub, and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. But if I with the finger of God, there you go, Jesus, my friend, had the finger of God. Amen. Amen. And if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. But you're just so dumb and lug-headed, you can't get it. Right. See? See, God saves us. we got so much of this junk going on. we got these people that know a God, but he's not the God that can do anything for you. He can't even preserve his word. Right. Mm -hmm. This God never even took the time to give you his word. It's up to them and their newest scholars to try to find you his word. And then it's a piece of garbage. Stinks to high heaven. Full of errors. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Matthew 12. Matthew 12, 28. Mm -hmm. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, did you see that? Here it is. In Luke 11, 20, he called it the finger of God. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. You know how you've got a King James Bible in your hand and it is the Word of God? You're looking at the finger of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'll show you the verse in a minute that says that God's finger wrote the commandments when Moses first took them off the mountain. Mm -hmm. right. And yet tell me, if your Bible ain't, in spirit, ain't, 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 the, ain't inspired by the Spirit of God, the Bible teaches us, yes, all scriptures given by inspiration of God. Right. Amen. Amen. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Amen. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. The finger of God and the Word of God are life. You can't have no life outside the Word of God. Right. You can't have no life outside the finger of God. Man. See, eternally they're bound together. Where God wrote one, Amen. If God wrote the Bible by the Spirit of God, well, He's wrote the Word of God in your heart, in your heart, and, and in your mind. 1 Peter 1, 22-23 tells us how the Holy Ghost, by which we got the Word of God, and you're saved by the Word of God, by the Lord, because he says there over there in Peter, how that you're saved by the Word of God. It lives and abides forever. It's not by money, silver, gold that you're redeemed, but by the precious Word of God. So if God's Spirit wrote this book, but you're accountable to this book, this is the finger of God. Right. You better pay attention because it gives life and gives it more abundantly. Amen? Amen. Amen. So it's interesting that this term is used that Jesus stooped down and with the finger of God wrote on the ground. Mm -hmm. Exodus 8, 19. Them magicians said, man, this is the finger of God. God is showing up here. God's spirit showing up here. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Leviticus number Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, the last of the five books of Moses. And there are five sermons in Deuteronomy. And look at Deuteronomy chapter 9 and verse 10. And the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone written with the finger of God. Amen? Yep. You can read about it in Exodus 31, 18. And on them was written according to all the words which the Lord spake with you in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. So what what fascination it is to consider the finger of God. Luke eleven twenty. Luke eleven twenty. If I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. 
here's Jesus says he's writing something. Mm -hmm. I bet you what he's writing matches the Holy Spirit of God. Yeah. And the Holy Ghost of God. Now again, what are we discussing here? What is the issue? These clowns with their slipshod, slop jar theology say, the hell, the hell, oh, Moses commanded us. Did he? Uh, we just read last week where there's no prophet coming out of Galilee. You idiots, Amos came out of Galilee. You idiots, Jonah came out of Galilee. <laughs> as far as we know, even Elijah and some of the, and Elisha probably came out of Galilee. But again, notice how they got their new revised standard translation, yes. uh, slop jar trans interpretations, mm -hmm. and attitude toward the Bible. You can't come at the Bible that way. Amen. The Bible means what it says and says what it means. Right. And you're reading into it what you want it to say because you want to kill somebody. Ain't right. Amen. So where's that put the Muslim religion? <laughs> it ain't right. Amen. <laughs> you kill people in the name of Allah? What's wrong with you? What a crackpot. So, what did he write on the ground? That's what we need to get to here in a minute. Amen? Amen. So thirdly, we see the picture of man's dark nature. All men are sinful. They're guilty of serious sin. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Mm -hmm. If you're going to quote the holy law, let's at least be half holy before we pick up a stone to kill somebody else in the name of God, amen, in amen. the Holy Bible. Amen. Okay, that sounds legitimate to me. Go ahead, holy man. Yeah. The man that's without sin, let him cast the first stone at her. And guess what? They begin to realize, oops, that ain't me. No, <laughs> this right. right away said, that definitely get me out of here. <laughs> I didn't answer to that. <laughs> so notice the counter question that Jesus gave them, amen? If any man is without sin, then he can condemn her. See? And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Pretend like this isn't that important. But I bet what he was writing was very important. And I bet when they watched him, I bet it made perfect sense. Now, you know what he's doing. I mean, you did this as a kid, right? If you've ever done it at the beach, you know you're wasting time writing in the sand on the beach. I mean, the sand just <laughs> gobbles it up. You know? But now, if you can find your little mud puddle or something the, where the clay and the, uh, the dirt uh, was, was made nice and clean, then you take a stick or your finger, even write, well, wow, your letters stay in that mud. <laughs> Don't they pretty good? And so whatever Jesus was writing, they could probably see clearly what he was writing. And uh, again, for a man that had no rabbinical training, I'm sure he could write pretty good. That being homeschooled, amen. So uh, right. he writes something, and as they are reading what he wrote, it had cut them to the quick. Now I believe that with all my heart. Right. They were all convicted. The oldest accuser first, all the way down to the last and youngest accuser. So what would he have written? Well, of course, we're discussing the law. So let's oh, let's just assume they know a little bit about the law, and just go back and look it up. Let's go back and look it up. Now, I would like to think that if, in its most liberal interpretation, in the most liberal preacher's lips today, he might say, well, perhaps Jesus simply wrote the verse of Micah 6 8. Because this is what, what would a Jewish man under the law, what should he be? What should he be like? Should he be like Muhammad or should he be like Jesus? <laughs> Amen. So let's look up Micah. Jonah, Micah, Nam, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Let's, let's, look, let's look up Micah 6 and verse 8. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee? If you were an Old Testament Jew under the law, this is what God would require of thee. But to do justly and to love mercy... See, this is how you're supposed to, the kind of person you're supposed to be. Yes. A person that would do justly and yet love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. There Amen. it is. There's the three things that an Old Testament Jew was to do. He's to walk justly in all of his dealings. He would do what's just. And yet he would love mercy and want to just heap blessings on people that they didn't deserve it. Mm -hmm. And yet he would walk humbly, not cocky, 
with his God. Amen. So Jesus could have wrote that all by itself. And if those Jews were really strict legalists, like they were pretending to be, that should be enough to convict them that they weren't doing justly and they weren't showing mercy. And they definitely wouldn't have walked in humbly with God because they're going to kill God in just a few more days. Right. So we better back off that. So the most liberal preacher could maybe say Jesus wrote that on the ground and that would bother them. But nay, nay, I don't think that was it. What we're dealing with here is they're quoting a part of the law that only dealt with virgins. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Deuteronomy 22. Now there's another part of the law that deals with married ladies. And it has a whole different remedy for a married woman compared to a virgin. And what they're taking this verse that had to do with virgins, and they're bringing this married lady up in front of Jesus saying, Moses commanded us to kill this woman. What do you because again you gotta remember they're trying to trick Jesus, see? They think they're so smart at the Bible that they're gonna outsmart Jesus. Who wrote the Bible? <laughs> By the Spirit of God. Amen. Right. So look at Deuteronomy 22, and let's read it here in verse 24. Verse 23 says, If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of that city, and ye shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried not, being in the city, and the man, because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, so thou shalt put away evil from among you. Now that's what God said to do. But this is no damsel. But because it's a woman, they're wanting to take this and apply it with their slop jar approach to interpreting, interpreting the Bible and put this on Jesus. That this is the only thing Jesus should condone them to do is to stone the woman. So it's so typical of people in their interpreting the Bible. They see this God of love and they can't imagine that he's a God of separation. And has a strict interpretation of his word. And I believe Jesus knew this woman wasn't a virgin. He knew this was a married lady. So now let's see what the Bible says. But what if the lady is a married lady? What are we supposed to do with a married lady? Now let's go to Numbers. Leviticus Numbers. Chapter 5. Did I say chapter 5? Chapter 5. <clears throat> Number for death. For some people. <laughs> Could be grace for others. Now look at what it says in verse 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and saying to them, If any man's wife go aside and commit a trespass against him, and a man lie with her carnally, and it be hid from the eyes of her husband, and be kept close, and she be defiled, and there be no witness against her, neither she, neither she uh, be taken with the, with the manner, and the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be defiled, or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be not defiled, then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest, and he shall bring her offering for her, the tenth part of an ephah, a barley meal. He shall pour no oil upon it, nor put frankincense thereon, for it is an offering of jealousy, an offering of memorial, bringing iniquity to remembrance. And the priest shall bring her near and set her before the Lord. And the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel, and of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle, the priest shall take and put it into the water. So he's to take the dust off the altar and put it in that water, and now she's got to drink the water with that dust in it. And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord and under and uncover the woman's head and put the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causes the curse. And the priest shall charge her with an oath and say unto the woman, If no man have lain with thee, and if thou hast not gone aside to uncleanness with another instead of thy husband, be thou free from this bitter water that causes the curse. 
But if thou hast gone aside to another instead of thy husband, and if thou be defiled, and some man have lain with thee besides thine husband, then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing, and the priest shall say unto the woman, The Lord make thee a curse and an oath among thy people, when the Lord doth make thy thigh to rot and thy belly to swell. See, the one case, here's a lady that's not married yet. That case, that woman and the person who lay with her, they're to be killed with stoning. Amen. But now here's a married woman where they have to do, they go through these motions and go through and get this dust and put it in the water. She has to drink it. And then God, if, if she's to be killed, God will kill her. Right. How big is your God? Amen. See? God will kill her. Notice what's required. This is what's required. Let me just finish it. Verse 22. And this water that causes the curse shall go into thy bowels to make thy belly to swell and thy thigh to rot. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. I bet you many as a woman could get to the first Amen and then she ran out of the room as quick as she could. <laughs> And the priest shall write these curses in a book. And he shall blot them out of the bitter water. Blot them out with the bitter water. That's what Je I believe with all my heart. Jesus knelt down there and he was writing, verse 23. The priest shall write these curses in a book. And he shall blot them out with the bitter water. See, they weren't doing the scripture. Right. You can always spot these smart alecks because they can quote it and they always misquote it. Yeah. But they can't do it. Right. Amen? They won't do it. Most likely he was writing the curses as required in Numbers 5.23. Her version was to be stoned, but a wife required a special procedure that left the punishment with God. These guys are too quick with their power to play God. That's why they're going to crucify Jesus in just a few, few more chapters. Amen. Mm -hmm. Wow. Amen. Mm -hmm. So while the Bible does not record it for us, you can be sure whatever Jesus wrote, it was Bible. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You can be sure it was Bible. Mm -hmm. Because if the Word wrote a Word, believe me, it was the Word. <laughs> and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's right. So in conclusion, we see the great revelation. Jesus alone has the right to condemn and forgive. Hallelujah. Amen. He's such a God of mercy and grace. Then Jesus, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman. He said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? <laughs> there he is still asking questions. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Hath no man condemned thee? Mm -hmm. Don't you love Jesus for asking the right questions? Yeah. She said, No man, Lord. Amen. Boy, she's way ahead of Judas. Yep. Judas always called Jesus master, master, but Judas could never call Jesus Lord. Right. But this lady saw in Jesus, I am sure, what some of us know him to be. Amen. Amen. As of the Lord. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Our Messiah. She, she said, No man, Lord. She said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Amen. Praise God. He's a God of a second and third and fourth chance. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. He's the God of all grace. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. I love that song. Joy sang for you. It's nice to hear it again. It's been a long time. Amen. Let's all stand by our heads in prayer. Lord, we're so thankful that you show us throughout the scriptures how that Jesus was able to demonstrate for us what grace and